Let's go. My name is Brooke and my business is The Junk Parlor. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm excited to share with you my house all decked out for Christmas. Now, I am not a over-the-top decorator. I am a keep it simple decorator. We have been in this house for a year and a half and just finished hardwood floors a few months ago. And so I'm still kind of learning where I want to place things and getting a feel for what works in this house. So I am excited to show you what we have done this time. What I decided to do on the table is use a wreath as the base. And then I put a cake stand underneath. I did some greenery on the cake stand and then added these little candles. I'm very excited to say that I have done a lot of this decorating on film for you. So if you want to see how I did things, you can go and watch that video. I will link that here for you. So unlike a lot of people's Christmas trees, ours is a little bit different because we have all of the kids' old ornaments on it. So you know how it is. They make something in school every year. And so with three kids, we have collected those and we just continue to add them to the tree. Also, my church growing up would always do a ornament each year. And so we have a lot of those as well. Some are just for the Johnson family, and then some are for the individual kids. And so even though those are not things that the kids have made, those are ornaments that we do keep on the tree. The kids like to decorate the tree. I would say this year was probably the least they have participated because Cash did a few one night and Kyler did a few one night and typically we try and all do it together, but that just didn't happen and the oldest isn't here anyway. But we put these out because they are so fun to look at and brings back lots of memories of their cheesy looks and how much they have grown up and, and, and just their, their personalities. wanted a round coffee table since we moved in and I picked this one up with the intention of stripping it to a dark wood tone because it definitely clashes with our new wood floors. You might think oh just get an area rug but because of this thing right here we cannot have a rug because she thinks any rug or carpet is grass. So Brooke will be redoing this coffee table at some point. Now, what I did stick on the coffee table was just a wash basin, little ironstone bowl. It is sitting on top of a ring off of an old light fixture. I've used this as a cloche base many times. 
And then I stuck in a tartan patterned scarf just for some bowl filler so I didn't have to have quite so many bulbs and it just adds another layer. And then I also have some little bottle brush trees. I think these were off of like a railroad track and I've just randomly stuck them in there because I wasn't sure what else to do with them. I shared a lot in the video about decorating the mantle. It ended up being a little problematic. When we first moved in here, the television was a very difficult to get hung because what happened was where the studs are and where you need to screw stuff in and where the outlets are, none of that was working well with what we got. So we actually took back the mount that we originally had, got another one that seemed to be a little bit more flexible in positioning, and this is the result. So while it looks like the TV is actually sitting on the mantle, it is actually a wall mount. It will pull away and pivot. Can't right now because we have garland in front of it, but it's a focal point that really annoys me. I want to remount it and get it mounted higher. I have now since processed, hey, let's just put a sheet of plywood or do some two by fours. I'll paint them to match. You're not gonna see them anyway. And then that way we can screw the TV in where we want to, which needs to be higher and more centered in between the built-ins and the mantle. Someday that will happen. It will happen possibly sooner because of where I put the garland. So Matt knows that in the future, if he does not want this covering up his TV in the winter time, then he's going to need to help me move the TV up. So this is minuscule compared to what it was. So I did have it going over probably another six to 12 inches. And even it annoyed me when we were watching TV. So I condensed it down and scooted it over so that I was happy with how it looked, but it didn't interfere with TV viewing. So what I ended up doing was I had three champagne buckets that I picked up at auction and I just decided I wanted them to go here beside the TV. So on one, you can see in my decorate with me video that I mounted it on a beaker stand. Yes, a beaker stand here on the left. And then I have the garland and some horns and I ordered some ribbon off of Amazon that I will link. I do really, really love the ribbon, but for the price you really didn't get much. So I have two pieces wrapped around these champagne buckets and then I have a little bit here at this book. It is absolutely amazing stuff. It's like um, velvety on one side, satiny on the other. It is frayed, super easy to work with and it was an easy way to add a pop of a red into my winter decor or Christmas decor because what's going to happen when Christmas is over, I'm taking off the red, but I'm probably going to leave the rest of the mantle. So in one, I have a horn or an antler and some greenery. The other one, I have pheasant feathers, and I do have this one sitting on something to give it a little bit of height. This is a, actually a nutcracker bowl, which I absolutely love, and I do have one right next door as a base of the poinsettia, which is dying. So my mom came over and visited and she said, Brooke, you need to stab this foil base because the poinsettia does not like to sit in water, although it likes to be wet. Well, guess what? When I took this over to the sink, it was like a whole <laughs> puddle of water sitting in there. So we will see if I can keep it alive. Here I just have a nice stack. I've got some bottle brush trees in a goblet and a candlestick holder. I put some ornaments up here in a couple stacked brass bowls. Otherwise we have just layered things here. 
coming down to where I put the ribbon on the books. I just thought it kind of gave a pop of red, helped tie in the red. I tried to put something red in each section of the built-ins essentially. A funny story about this nativity. I've said it many times, but my mom was doing tour homes with somebody and helping them, or maybe they were helping her, can't remember. But they put the nativity out that was just like this one. And they're like, oh my gosh, we lost baby Jesus. We lost baby Jesus. I mean, I don't know how long it went on before someone went, oops, surprise, there's baby Jesus. I added some red ribbon and stuck a poinsettia in on top of these pine cones and this ironstone terrain. I have the rest of the ribbon up here in the candy dish. The biggest one wouldn't fit, sadly. I have an old Night Before Christmas book. And then this used to be my grandma's, and so I just kept it, stuck it in a flower frog. But I thought if I got a different flower frog, one that's not so domed, I could probably put a lot of these bubble lights in there. I put a bottle brush tree in a Santa mug. Most of the Santa mugs I have, I sell. This one I've hung on to just this season. Added Santa's hat here again, just to give a pop of red to this little section. Going up to the next level, I put some greenery in a wood bowl. And then to add red, I put a little ornament and I just went ahead and hooked it on my green pictures. And up top, we have just an addition of a book. And over here, I added the stars to my willow tree nativity. And I really thought I would tie some red ribbon on there, but I ran out. Coming back over to these, I was talking about how I put greenery in one with an antler. I did pheasant feathers in one. And then over here, I just did the antlers. This top cubby, these used to be my mom's ornaments, I think. And I do have this gumdrop tree listed on the website. Another old book. Kind of gives red to that section. Still have my paintbrush collection underneath the cloche and I just added a little ornament to the butter pat stack. Here on the bottom, I tucked in some greenery. I have a, a star tree topper, again, with the stars. Added in some little ornaments and red dice into this little tobacco um, or cigar box. Got some keys in there too, but somebody has put little dividers in it. Elf on the Shelf at our house has always been more like a uh, Where's Waldo? So more like a hide and seek kind of game for the kids and I. Another old Christmas book and more bottle brush trees in my green pictures. I have some darts sticking in a flower frog down here in the bottom of the bowl with a nest, my little sheep, and I added some mittens, draped them over the clock. Another bottle brush tree and a brass little goblet back there. And then I had some star, I think it's something to do with like gift wrapping. And I just kind of threw it on top of the books that are here in the bowl. This green bowl is on the website, I know. And then I have the Willow Tree Nativity set. So one spot obviously needed to be that. 
I varied the heights with some boxes. I added in some wool trees that I've made and put a different mirror here in the back to give it some height. And then up top, we already had the green cradle, which is on the website. It'd probably look good filled with a bunch of pine cones or red ornaments, but that didn't happen. And then we have an old Santa that was my grandparents. on guard on the couch. I didn't really add anything to the side table for Christmas. I, I like it how it is. I actually did switch out the money box. I had a wood box there, which I like better, but it is also on the website and I was just nervous about it getting ruined. Over here, this is actually another family piece. So Santa is my great grandparents. So my mom said she can remember them always having this up at their house when she would go over for Christmas. I probably was four when he died. So I don't really have any memories. I have some photos of me sitting on his lap and stuff, but I don't really remember my great grandpa on that side. But my mom said he always liked to grab stuff. So I would say maybe that is something or somewhere that I got it. He does need to get some wood on the back or something to sturdy him up because right now I do have him thumbtacked into the wall. It is just cardboard. He folds in half. Used to have a little stand, but that has fallen apart over the years. My grandma had this in her garage, and I never, ever remember seeing her put it out on display. It was tucked behind a cabinet in the garage, and when I was helping her clean it out, I found it, and I'm like, I want this. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I want it. Then I did wrap some Christmas presents and use Santa's hat as my little tree topper, I'm not really sure what the base is, but I've had it on the porch, I've had it in the shop, I've had it pretty much everywhere, and I just thought it would look super cute with the packages. I do just wanna point out this cabinet, that I bought this cabinet at Goodwill here in Ankeny, Iowa. I wanna say it was $11 which if you go to thrift stores, you know that $11 for a piece of furniture never happens. I don't care what that piece of furniture looks like. So I was pretty excited to get this big piece. It's not perfect, but it's the perfect colors and the perfect character and I love it here in this spot in our entry. wondering why Brooke do you have lights on the ground and I do have lights on the ground because I saw someone else have them at night in probably probably on Instagram and I absolutely loved it so my kids are old enough that they're not gonna step on them hopefully and I just thought it added a little extra touch then I do have a Moravian star stacked in some greenery and a bunch of my wood bowls for my tree base this year. I put it in, I want to call this a shipping container. It's nice because it gives my small tree some height and it also actually makes it smaller, which is necessary in our house because we don't really have a whole lot of space. And Bella likes to look out our sliding glass door and I just recently picked up this little dog bed at the thrift store. It didn't look like it had ever been used even though it didn't have the original tags on it. And then I do have a bunch of these little sample rugs listed on the website. Here's what I've done with mine. Yes, Bella is eating out of our wedding china which we never use. A lot of these bread tins are listed on the website. 
And I have recently hung these antlers and I thought it was a perfect spot for a Santa hat. I always like to have something on my island and I recently thrifted a big basket in the fall. So I had it decorated for the fall season and then now I've decorated it for Christmas. This poinsettia was the biggest one that I got and so far it's looking okay. I wouldn't say it's looking amazing. This I picked up thrifting. Just needed some batteries. I've got some garland stuck in there, a cake stand with some plates, and then this little green food cover. I just love it. And I have the poinsettia in a McCoy planter, which I also love. The end of our island, I have this stool from my grandma and I always sat on it in the kitchen in the old house and I knew I wanted it somewhere to sit on in this house, which you might think, Brooke, you have all of this furniture. Why don't you just sit on a chair? And I don't know. I sit on this stool quite a lot. The only thing I did over here on the counter with my MJB coffee tins was add a couple little red bulbs. And those are just plastic. I also moved my little turtle salt and pepper shakers over here. They had been in the window and the window now has garland. This bubble light was my grandma's. And I thrifted these candles and they're awesome. They're suction, they bend and then you just twist them and the light comes on. And then, yes, I swapped out my faux pumpkins for outside so that I had something decent to look at. This thing is blown over like a million times and it's only been out there a week. And I totally feel like my grandma Pat decorating god awful, a god awful tree outside, but I needed something to look at now that I don't have a beautiful hay field and, and farm to look at. I did stick some cookie cutters that were my grandma's in my garland here in the kitchen just because I like to look at things when I'm standing here, even though I never do dishes by hand. And then I shared this also with this little garland and the lace scraps. And I really planned on adding the red ribbon to it, but like I said, I ran out of red ribbon super quick, and at the price point that it was at, I just didn't feel like I wanted to get any more. I did have these red straws from, I don't know, quite a while ago. I had them out for red, white, and blue stuff, and I love, love, love this little silver sugar bowl, and just stuck them in there. This round breadboard used to be on the dining room table where the wreath is now. This little chicken cookie cutter was my grandma's also. And I'm just stacking some red and green stuff here to make a little vignette. I'd really like to put something else on the flower and kind of, I don't necessarily like where this is. However, I never found another spot for it, so is where it is for now. This corner has a couple bread tins, a cookie uh, jar that does not have cookie in it, and the little gingerbread house, which I tell you the story on it in the Decorate With Me video. But that's kind of how the kitchen counters are looking. I did add something else fun over here with my new flour, sugar, and coffee canisters which they're not quite the perfect green for me, but these again are some of my grandma's cookie cutters and I just hook and hook them over the canister and I really love the way it looks. Now I thought I used to have a way more than two red, but of course I couldn't find them. I do use this breadboard just kind of as a noodle board to protect the stove so so not as many crumbs get in there so if you're ever wondering why that is in our little mudroom the garage is out there i have green suitcases but other than that i didn't add anything 
I did bring up a jar so we can put our Christmas cards in it. And in our bedroom, I really didn't do anything either. I added Santa's hat to my mannequin. The video that's going viral on Instagram, there's that tree. If you haven't seen it, I've shared it on a YouTube short. And in my last two videos, I actually think I put it in there. I never did end up, I see that I shoved this in there. I never did end up doing anything with that. And then no Christmas in our bathroom. This is a picture of Matt and I holding my belly. Probably, I don't remember exactly, I would say a couple weeks maybe before Carson died. Very memorable pictures because we did not do that with any of the other kids. And I still have not done anything with this wall. Again, I absolutely love this duck print. There was a nail, right, or not print, painting. There was a nail hole right there. So I hung it, <laughs> even though it probably looks silly, because I just can't figure out what to do on this wall. I've had like a million things up there and I don't like anything. They're all okay, but it's not like, ooh, this is the winner. And remember how I said that darn dog, she is peeing on all the carpet and rugs. Well, pretty much the only carpet other than the kids' bedrooms, which we have them trained to keep everything uh, shut, is down there. And guess who has started to go down there and pee? So until I get a baby gate, I've been trying to thrift one. I'm just blocking her off with the show.